In this video training, we'll look at the advanced trigger capabilities available in Teledyne LaCroix's Sierra SASATA Analyzer platform. In the previous chapter, we saw that most users will be fine using the basic triggering that's available in easy mode. For example, by selecting SSP frame, I can use any field or combination of fields within the header as a trigger event. If I'm interested in seeing any SSP frames that are retried, for any reason, I can assert the retransmit bit as the trigger event. Press OK, and now I'm set to trigger on the first SSP frame that has the retransmit bit set. Within the pattern trigger, you'll probably find 90% of the events that you need. The primary exception to that is when you may need to wait for a series of events or a sequence. In our example, we're triggering on a retried SSP frame, but maybe that's not specific enough. We can always come down, add another event, say a protocol error, act knack timeout, click OK, then click on the sequential trigger mode box. That creates a simple two-state logical trigger sequence. The analyzer will now wait for any SSP frame with the retransmit bit set followed by an ACNAC timeout error. You could add additional sequential events with the Add button, or you can change the order of the events using the arrows. To make a sequential trigger more effective, you would typically specify a direction. In our example, if you were suspicious that the drive wasn't responding, then you would want to see the ACNAC timeout coming from the initiator direction. Disabling the target means we'll only trigger when the timeout is sent by the initiator. And use these other fields to narrow the triggering as much as you can. So the easy mode can trigger on any event or any simple sequence of events, but if you need to include timer-based state changes, you'll need to switch to the advanced mode. Here you can specify all the same events, but then you can add timers and loops. With 23 logical states, multiple events within each state, you can create pretty sophisticated triggering state machines with the advanced mode. I'll provide a simple example using timer-based state changes, which is really the main reason you would want to go into this interface. The diagram on the left is really just a graphical representation of the trigger settings you choose over on the right side. It opens with the two events I selected in easy mode, already preloaded. You can remove the events just by clicking on the minus sign. That removes the event from that logical state. To add back a different event to state 0, you click on the plus sign, select an event, say address open, and now that event is part of state 0. So you can put one or more patterns in a state and then use the go to pop-up menu to jump to an existing state or to a new state. So that's the mechanism to create a sequence where the analyzer will wait for the address frame state condition to be met, then it will jump to the next state one where it will wait for an SSP frame condition to be met. The box at the top of each state allows you to choose whether to filter in or filter out certain events at that point in the sequence. So you set up your trigger logic on the right and on the left the state diagram gives you a visual representation of that trigger scenario. A simple sequence such as this can be accomplished in the easy mode, but the real power of the advanced mode is the ability to create nested loops and timers as part of the triggering. So I'm going to create a new triggering scenario and we'll start from scratch in advanced mode. When it comes to testing wide port SAS traffic, the key consideration in using the advanced mode is whether you need to track events that are specific to a single port or can occur on any port. Link layer handshaking can occur from phi to phi, but at the SCSI layer, transactions can actually occur over different physical links and you need to maintain that awareness of these different physical links if you're triggering on SCSI level operations. 
if we want our trigger scenario to follow a certain sequence of events on a specific physical link, then we need to use the multi-sequencer option. Assuming again that we have an architecture with two layers of expanders and the analyzer is sitting upstream from the topmost expander and we want to trigger on lower level link management handshaking, we'll need to set up four independent sequences with independent timers for all four links. You need to start in this multi-sequencer mode and then you can easily duplicate a single trigger scenario across all four ports. I'll create an example of a pathway recovery test scenario which will help us trigger anytime a connection request is not handled within the arbitration wait time timeout. When you create a new trigger scenario it's going to default to triggering on anything which will behave similar to snapshot. So let's go ahead and remove that. It changes to a plus sign. We click, we'll choose address frame and then select open. Click OK. We left the subfields like the address undefined. So it can be any open from any initiator to any target. These other fields can be left blank for now. We'll go to the pop-up and select new state. So after our open, what do we want to wait for in this new state? Well, first you need to select it so that you can set the parameters for that new state. You can also use these nav buttons to jump back and forth between various states. In this next state, we'll click on the plus sign, choose primitive, and select waiting on partial. Click OK. This will only occur if the expander is trying to establish a connection with the target phi, but it's busy serving another request. The arbitration fairness protocol now requires that the expander set a timer set to 15 microseconds where the expander will need to either send an open accept or an open reject. That partial pathway timer can actually vary based on the expander setup, but let's assume 15 microseconds. Then we'll use go to and jump to another new state. Make sure we select our new state, then add a new pattern, primitive, select, open, accept, click OK. If the analyzer sees the open accept, jump back to state zero. Then I'll use the plus sign again to add another primitive, this time open reject any, click OK. And if I see that event, I also want to jump back to state zero. And then finally, my trigger event, I'm going to use timer one elapsed and set that as the trigger. So anytime you use the plus sign to add multiple patterns to a single state, you create an OR condition. Whichever one of these events occurs first will create the action. So just to quickly walk through this logic, I'm going to wait for an open. I'm going to then wait for the AIP waiting on partial primitive. Once I see that, I'm going to jump to state 2 where I'm going to wait for an open accept or an open reject. If I see either of those, I'm going to restart the sequence. Else, if the timer elapses and 15 microseconds goes by, then I'm going to trigger. That means the expander is misbehaving and creating some kind of bus contention issue. Now, just like we saw with easy mode, we can filter out individual events from the buffer to preserve space. In the sequencer, we can actually choose to filter out different items at each state and then filter them back in at the next state. So very flexible there. Now, with my sequence complete, I'm going to go down and click Make Same as Current. The software will now copy the same sequence into all four ports. I select Yes, and I'm ready to go. The same sequence will be monitored for all four active ports.
Be sure and save your project with a unique file name so you can come back and reuse this project in the future.